Okay, what's going on, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Energize. Today, we have a very special guest on the show. We have undefeated Cage Warriors fighter, handsome Paul Hughes. <laughs> Was that Hansel or handsome? No, handsome. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, handsome, because you're very handsome. Thank you, sir. I, 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 I heard... I heard you and Ian Gary are fighting over the most handsome man in Cage Warriors. That's the, that's the word in the street. That's not even a question. That's not <laughs> even a question. Especially me as, the, as a bald eagle right now. Ian, uh, I think Ian, Ian actually shaved his head as well. Ian shaved his head as well. Two is looking fresh. Did he? Yeah. 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 Copycat. See, you see me do it. That's what it was. There you go. Uh, he actually sent me loads of laughing faces there whenever I first put up a video of me with a bald head. So I don't know what, I don't know what he's talking about then. <laughs> Maybe he thought you copied him. Nah, no way. No way, fam. Paul, we, Paul, we may as well start there. Um, we've, we've had, like, numerous people on the show. Uh, we, like, they've been saying, like, for instance, like, Pete's Carroll, the even Lisa McKee. Um, the question has been, like, who are the, the like, biggest up-and-coming stars coming from Ireland, like, the, the mm-hmm. Irish oil? And, they, like, your name and Ian Gary's name come out all the time. What, like, when you hear stuff like that, what, like, how do you feel? Uh, it feels right at the end of the day, me and Ian are, well, obviously you've got the likes of Reese and Joe, but me and Ian are the youngest. I, I don't yeah. think Reese is too much older than me, but Reese has been around, all around the game. Yeah, that's, so yeah, people that's the difference. Sort of, Reece has been there a long yeah, time. People yeah. sort of put, think Reese and they think like a vet, and he is a veteran of the game and soon to be signed to the USC. But when they talk about me and Ian, they, they, they talk about us as the up and comers, which we are. Do you know what I mean? Me and Ian are both, what, 22? Um, yeah. very very young in our careers and both sort of making waves so it's great man and it's true do you know what I mean like Ian's an absolute savage and I don't say that lightly I, I don't really like I don't p- blow people's trumpet whenever it doesn't deserve to be blown do you know what I mean but yeah. Ian is Ian is a fantastic unbelievable talent and yeah that's it even though it doesn't carry as much weight in MMA as it would in say boxing the undefeated record is like something that's like very much glamorized, and I think people are, are very much like they haven't lost as a pro, so like that's what matters. You know what I mean? Like it, it does make it that bit more sexy, and it makes it that bit more appealing to someone who hasn't watched you before. Yeah, definitely. That sort of undefeated tag, like people hear that as you said, like from boxing. But if it's a good for promotion, do you know what I mean? Like Cage Warriors say, "Oh well, the undefeated Paul Hughes." It just sounds a lot better. Handsome, Paul, yes. Uh, of course. <laughs> that goes Come on, then. Come on, then. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what's called, I, haven't, I haven't seen you with a nickname, so I was like, that's it. Handsome, well, Paul, Hughes. There's the nickname sorted. I'm, yeah. uh, you know what I mean? You don't choose your own nicknames. That's what I always say when people ask me. I say, you don't choose it. So now, we, there we are. We, we've got it. Handsome. There you go. If one thing, if this lockdown hasn't, like, if you haven't done anything, you got the new nickname. Exactly. But uh, so, how are we, we getting on during lockdown as well, by the way? Like, obviously, you're an athlete. I'm great, mate. I honestly, I, I'm great. Do you know what I mean? I'm a very, I'm a very positive person anyway. And I sort of, I see the good in everything. But I genuinely, mate, I'm having a great time in lockdown. I must say, like, I'm still getting a lot of training in. Do you know I mean? A lot of running, a lot. I'm getting very, very fit. And I'm also, obviously, letting the body heal as well with, with injuries. I just fought a month ago. Yeah. I had a very, very intense I wouldn't say fight camp because I'm always training, but it's sort of because it was just Christmas. I had three months to my fight, and I really just pushed a new level that I've never really pushed before. Um, and that was to do with a couple of changes that I've made. But man, it's it's good. Like the body's healing, but I'm also I'm, I'm putting that time in as well. And life's good, man. The sun's out, as you see. It's it's exactly. life's good. Yeah. In fairness, your last fight. I think that would go down in like top 10 Cage Warriors knockouts of all time. You harness your inner Mirko Crow Cop. It was <laughs> absolutely left, left, or what, what did I say? Right kick, gospel, left kick cemetery. You're like <laughs> absolutely out cold. I think we actually like shared the photo. I, I, I was actually watching it on my phone and I was like, screenshot it, then put it up on the story. And I was like, I think you put it up on your uh, Instagram or the Cage Warriors put it up on their Instagram. We reposted it again. I was like, I was like, it's one of the best knockouts I've seen in ages. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 The, the question is, sorry, I'm not, obviously people have been watching and we're just, because we're all best mates now. I, I, need to, I need to find out, how did you actually start in the Mixed Martial Arts game? Um, so I always loved, like, uh, I always loved boxing and stuff like that growing up. And I, w- I was very, very involved in sport. I was a big uh, uh, guy player, Gaelic Carlin played a bit of soccer too. And 
And like, to be honest, that was, that was my life until I found MMA until I was 15, I think. And like, I was just as involved and just as obsessed with, with uh, Gaelic and hurling than I was with MMA now. Like I've always had that sort of mindset of just obsessed, wanting to be the best. And then it was actually just a good friend of mine. His brother had started MMA at a local gym and he had some mats out the back and he started showing us some of the moves and that I, it just blew my mind. I was just like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. I was like, the fact that like, obviously we all know like jujitsu, it's about the, the smaller guy controlling the bigger guy. Mm. And I wasn't that big. I mean, still not that big of money, about six foot two at the minute. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Very big for a featherweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how it is. But uh, yeah, mate, so he just showed me some things and I was like, I got to go try this. Went to the beginner's class and after about a month, absolutely hooked. I mean, hooked. And from then on, it was just Gaelic went out the window and that was me obsessed. Fought about eight months later and the rest is history. Um, Paul, tell us this. The hottest thing in MMA right now is Foyle Island. And you mean by one person Bar your haircut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and obviously, Greg Boyle and uh, face a bit of backlash, but like Cage Warriors, I think, and the UFC are one of the only two promotions who actually have put on an event behind closed doors. Uh, would you fight in uh, behind closed doors? Um, you fought in the last one, didn't you? Yes, no? I'm very, yeah. very lucky to get fighting in that yeah. last one. Well, actually, yeah, so, sorry, the one before. Yeah, the one before, yeah. Last yeah, yeah, yeah. The one before that. So, like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't too long ago before your last fight, but would you fight behind closed doors? Oh, absolutely. 100%. I, I genuinely would fight tomorrow. And I'm not, like, as I said, I fought a month ago. I haven't obviously mm. done any sparring since lockdown, but my body's so fit. I'm in the zone when I'm training, when I'm hitting the bag. Like, and as Case, whenever Case, Case Warriors put that out last week about putting on the shows, I just texted Ian Dean straight away and I said, I'm in, sign me up for the first one. And he goes, you're number two. <laughs> I, I didn't see it till about two hours after the Case Warriors put it up. Otherwise, I would have been number one. But mate, I'm, as I say, like, I just live and breathe this, this game. Like, I'm, I'm not doing anything else in this spare time other than improving. So if I was able to get a fight in the middle of this, like, I know I would smash anyone because I know, as always, I'm, I'm out working any featherweight there. So I, I would love to fight in the first one, for sure. Uh, how's, how's Graham Bowden looking after you there in Cage Warriors? He seems to be doing some great things with, like, with certain Cage. artists. Case Warriors is, is the best, man, uh, I'm t to be completely honest. And Ian Dean is the man. Ian, obviously, you all know Ian is the matchmaker, and Graham and Ian run the show. But it, it's obviously the shows are amazing. The platform is incredible. But the, behind the scenes, the people are fantastic as well. And, and I have such a good relationship with the people there. Um, and my teammates do, and my coaches. We all have just a very good relationship. And I, I am proud to be a part of it. That's awesome. And I'm going to say a name to you, and you tell me how many more fights until you fight him. Jack Cartwright. Jack, he's bantam with you, by you. Oh, was he? Oh, my yeah. apologies. My apologies. Yeah. But like, I, I, I just thought he was on the feed. I thought I thought that was I thought that was a sexy name for you. You know what I mean? No, man, he's a bad man though. I'm a big fan of Jack Cartwright's. Big Sorry, big it's Mad Burnell as the featherweight champ, oh, isn't it? Boring, boring, boring. boring. He, 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 someone else called him boring there recently. Oh, that was me, mate. That was me. <laughs> well, Mad as Burnell, well as you. Boring, Morgan Charrier, boring. featherweight division, boring. As I said, in, in the. Does that mean? Does that mean we'll go up to lightweight? Sorry? Would you jump up to lightweight? Would I? Well, my last... I haven't fought a featherweight since my comeback fight of March of last year, and that's not by my choice. That's just by choice. That's late notice, isn't it? Not being able to get fights, yeah. And the late, la, last minute opponent changes, and then, for example, Manchester, Graham just said, look, we can't get a featherweight to fight you. You're going to have to move up. And I said, yes, of course. Do you mean anything to get a fight? It was and 160, then, wasn't it? In the end. It ended up being at 68. The first guy I was supposed to fight, Antonio Sheldon, very good opponent, was at lightweight. And then I think he pulled out a couple of weeks before and I got a replacement at 68. So it didn't work too bad. Yeah, no couldn't wait. Sorry? No couldn't wait. Yeah, that's it, man. It's good. It's good. I haven't had to do really any weight cutting apart from whenever I made featherweight last you, year. So it's good. Paul, did you jump at that just because, you like, obviously it was announced that UC was coming to Dublin and you're like, here, look, if I jump in now, this could get me to six and zero, and therefore I could, uh, I could make that UC Dublin card. Or because so, 
I knew I knew Cage Warriors were coming. I knew their schedule before they even announced UFC Dublin. So I just wanted to be active. At the end of the day, like I want to fight as much as I can. Last year I didn't get anywhere near as much, the amount of fights I wanted. I got yeah. three. Ended up the year four and zero. But like I'm sure you know, I just came back from a two year layoff. I wanted to fight seven, eight times, and I'm not. I'm not. I genuinely wanted to fight seven or eight times last year. And the, do you know what? I would have if the amount of fights that I had accepted that I had signed had went ahead other than the, the pull-outs I had. So, that's how it is. Yeah. When you, found out, when you found out UFC Dublin was going down, like, what was the first thing in your mind? The first thing in my mind was like, oh, I wonder, I wonder who can get me on, who's going to be on this. And I sort of thought, yeah. oh, well, Reese gets the belt here. And then loads and loads and loads of people were tagging me and it's saying, Paul Hughes yeah. is going to be 6-0 and by the time. Uh, they come back and then I was like oh fuck I, I'm going to be 6 and like do you know what I mean <laughs> I got Manchester yeah. and then Belfast and May yeah. I was like well I'm going to be 6 and 0 oh, and ideally 6 finishes against good guys like then there's absolutely no reason why I wouldn't be saying so I was like oh shit maybe I'll get signed <laughs> yeah. you know what I, I do think it's a blessing in the skies for Cage Warriors that you know this coronavirus has happened because uh, it looks like maybe yourself Ian Gary might have gone, uh, Reese McKee, they'd all be gone to the UFC. But uh, Cage Warriors might get one last fight out of all of us uh, before this all, all ends up. Uh, I, I know you said Mads Burnell is boring, but would you like to take the belt off? You're damn right. That's, that's the only reason I'm doing this. I want that featherweight belt, and I will get it. It's inevitable. It, it will be there. It'll be mine within the year, like 100%. Like, as I said, my post said, it'd be the last time. I'm young. I've only got five fights, but I'm ready for these guys. And as I said, Ian Dean is the man. He, he'll get the fights and maybe one or two more, and I'll be fighting for that belt. Ideally in Belfast. One or two more? Yes, sir. Yeah. Just leading up to your last fight as well, I saw on your Instagram, if people haven't checked it out, make sure to check it out. Uh, I saw you were doing like a, like a sort of an embedded series, we'd call it with a, mm-hmm. sort of a fly in the wall documentary leading up to it, which was fucking brilliant, by the way. Whoever did that, I don't, I don't know. Thank you, man. Shout out to Roscoe Creative. He's the man. Uh, there, we, there we go. Thanks. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that, that was brilliant. How, how did that come about? And also, do you plan on doing that again for your next fight? Because yeah, looking 100%. back at this, that could be amazing. Yeah, so Ross, the guy who produced that mini doc series, has been following me since, since Bama, since I made my debut about three years ago. So Ross has Ross has a fucking a lot of shit that we're like we're dropping a documentary. We don't know when we're gonna drop it. Probably after I get the belt or just before I sign to the UFC. But Ross has been following me for years. We have a lot of content and a lot of really good stuff. And that was sort of just our, our promo for uh, for Manchester. And whenever Belfast hits again in September, there's gonna be a lot longer of a documentary series. So yeah, but that. That's amazing content to have had and the build-up for it. And then the, the results, uh, the way you won, like it's so, so emphatic. It was just like, whoa, that was class. Yes, mate. It just all, it yeah, all it comes is. together. But it comes together because of the work. At the end of the day, like, it's all good having this stuff and, and looking good and promoting yourself well on social media. But there's nobody that works harder than me. And I genuinely, I know that for an absolute fact. Mm. So when it all comes together at the end, it's, it's a sweet feeling. But I know it's going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, Paul, obviously you've uh, like you are a featherweight, but you can't find some of the fights there. Uh, you you've tasted that lightweight. Um, if the UFC comes calling, will it definitely be featherweight, or will it be lightweight, or will there be a bit of bounce in between both, depending on what's going? It'll it'll definitely be featherweight. I am a yeah. featherweight fighter. Like I, I, it's not like I struggle to make featherweight. It's it's just the fact I can't get anyone to fight me there. But from now on, like as I've talked to Ian about it and, and to my coaches, my coaches aren't letting me fight up another way anymore. <laughs> like they genuinely aren't. I sort of had the choice last time. It was because, as I said, I couldn't get a featherweight to fight me for Manchester. So Graham was like, "If you want to fight, I have to move up." And I was just like, "Well, I'd rather the fight before Belfast than wait until May, because after my 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 debut for Cage Warriors was basically welterweight. It was like seventy five kg on a day's <laughs> notice." Do you know what I mean? Or two days notice. Got the call on the Wednesday night, flew out on the Thursday morning. And after that, my coaches were like, that's never happening again. He was like, that was just to get your foot in the door. And then just circumstances made it that I fought up a weight again because of the short notice. But from now on, it's, it's definitely featherweight. And trust me, any featherweight, any, if I get a hold of any featherweight, somebody who's actually around my weight, they're, they're done. Like, 
<laughs> they're dormant. They're like <laughs> but, but, fighting uh, these guys at seventy five kg and put, putting them out to sleep in the first round. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I really do believe it, but uh, I suppose. You know, if you do become that uh, featherweight, or when you become the Cage Warriors featherweight Sorry. champion, uh, there is that chance to emulate uh, the notorious one, Conor McGregor, and become a champ champ. Does that interest you in Cage Warriors? 100%. 100%. As many, pe- many people don't know, but I'm actually already a two-division champ on another promotion, Cage Conflict. And yeah. I don't really say that too much. This is Cage Conflict to show in Belfast. I won their featherweight title last year. And then at the end of last year, I won their lightweight title. So I'm actually a two-way champion already. So I would love to be the champ champ, then the champ champ of Cage Warriors and the champ champ of the UFC. Jeez, That's the goal. The bar is getting higher as, as the yeah. conversation goes along. <laughs> <laughs> no, next up, yeah, next up like, the Olympics. I, I, <laughs> I would love to get the lightweight belt. I think whenever, whenever I get that featherweight strap for Cage Warriors, um, probably within the next year. Like, I'm still growing as well. I'm still young. So I think a lightweight, it, I'll not be outsized at lightweight, put it like that. I would definitely love to get the, the two belts and do what Conor McGregor did at the end of the day. That's the, that's the best of all time right there. And to follow his, his footsteps would be would be sweet. That'd actually be a sexy fight, you and Mason Jones. Yeah, I would definitely like that fight. 100%. Mm. I like Mason Jones. I think he's a great He's good. Cool. He's very good. At the end of the day, he beat Joe McCogan and Joe's obviously my teammate is the man and Joe's an absolute savage. Do you know what I mean? But we all know that. And Mason Jones beat Joe, so I know how good that guy is. But I wouldn't roll it out down the line for sure. He said, Would you sort of like to get that one back for Joe? Say that again, sorry. Sorry, I was just saying, would you like to get that one back for Joe? Yeah, I, I sort of have that weird thing if, if my teammate loses or, or something like that happens, I sort of want to f- always fight the guy they lose to. <laughs> I don't know, I think it's just the competitive nature, obviously. Yeah, well, like you beat, it's like beating your brother, isn't it? It's like beating your <laughs> brother, so I'm like, how to get you now? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, obviously Ross brought up earlier at Boyd Island with the UFC. Is there anything that Gray might be doing behind the scenes? Maybe more shows behind closed doors? Because UFC announced they're going to be coming back, I think, around the 9th? 9th of May, I think. 9th of May. So maybe if that goes off without a hitch, Bellator and Cage Warriors might start going again. Um, hopefully, man. As, as Cage Warriors said, they've put it out there that they want to get back as soon as possible. Obviously, they're not going to be able to get back until lockdown ends, which we, we don't know. It could be three, four, could be five, six weeks. I don't know. Because obviously, the, the travel aspect of it. But I think... Like, I was talking to Ian. He doesn't know much about it, but I think it, it's going to be a couple of months at least, like. Yeah, I know, unfortunately. Um, yeah, in fairness, I think everyone's just dying to get some form of uh, sport and entertainment back on TV. Uh, outside of MMA, Paul, just, just for people to get to know you, what are your interests outside of MMA? Like, just, do you watch football or anything like that? Do you have any other interests? Interests outside of MMA? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I yeah uh, I don't as I really don't do much other than train to be honest. But now and like now that I have a bit more time to myself, I'm definitely reading a lot more. I do enjoy. A good ah, you're book. a nerd. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I love just self. I'm big into spirituality and meditation, which is probably something that a lot of people don't know. People don't know about me. I'm a big advocate for meditation. I've I've done like silent sort of retreats and for pure in silence for eight days and and stuff like that and i'm really really into that and the mind and as you can tell with my mindset towards fighting like i'm i'm very into the mind and psychology so yeah man that's the same but it sort of shows that you'd be tough man to break yeah <laughs> exactly you can't yeah. beat a man to give up that's the thing when you when you, when we've been doing these interviews over the last few weeks of uh the mindset and some people you can just see it and just you're just like well Oh, thank you, man. That's it. Well, that's I just live and breathe. That's what I mean. I'm just I'm utterly obsessed with just self improvement, high performance, and just being the best in the world. Like I really, really don't care about anything else. Like I, I genuinely don't care about anything else apart from being a world champion in cage wars and then the world champion in the UFC. Like nothing. That's why when your question you asked me, that sort of threw me off a bit because I'm like, fuck. What do I actually like other than <laughs> training? Like. I, it genuinely is all that consumes my mind. Like I don't really care about anything else. I watch a bit of fucking American comedians on YouTube, some Chris D'Elia, Theo Vaughn, and that's about it. Like I don't watch no Netflix. I don't. 
like people ask me all the time, oh, did you see this thing? And that I don't watch Netflix. I don't watch TV shows apart from Game of Thrones because it's the best TV show ever. <laughs> but apart from that, I don't I don't care about anything else. Yeah. You know, it goes it, it goes to show, really. You know what I mean? Like yeah, like it shows that when you step into that cage. And um, I think you know, cage warriors would be foolish not to put a rocket ship uh, on your back. And then same with the UFC when they get you. Uh, one thing that I'm really grateful for is with yourself and Ian and Reese is that it actually gives the UFC an excuse to come back to Dublin and then come back to Belfast. Yeah, hundred percent. That it's sort of the new wave, as they say. Mm. Um, and at the end of the day, you sort of need a face for that. And mm. obviously, the UFC could come over here and sell out shows without mm. having the Irish guys on there. But yeah. I think. Like, it's not just because me and Ian and Reese. it's not just because we're Irish. Like, I genuinely think that we're all going to be the top of the top in the UFC. It's not, we're not just the token Irish guys. Mm. Like, I've said it before, I want to be the UFC world champion. Like, and I'm sure Ian does and Reese does as well. Like, we're not just, we don't want to be the guy, oh, we're made event when they come to Ireland and that's it. We're going for gold. And I know I'm going for gold anyway. Yeah. Oh, I, I think your skill level is undeniable. And I think you guys are main eventers. As, as is, you know what I mean? And uh, uh, that's that's what I mean, as in, like, the UFC can put the rock chip on your back and then, like, Alec Con- Conor McGregor, you know what I mean, give you the yeah. uh, the rub of the green, the rub of the Irish, and, like, have your main event in Dublin or Belfast, or, you know, you can co-main event in Dublin, then main event Belfast, and, you know what I mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, you know, sky's the limit, you know what I mean? And I think yeah. Barry would agree as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much, man. Yeah. Also, just like you've mentioned UFC so much as well. What do you what do you make of the UFC featherweight division right now as well? Because like, uh, who's the? Oh yes, Volkanovski is the champ. Yeah. I actually so I actually trained with Alex. I trained with oh, him right. in Tiger Muay Thai last year. Um, we did quite, quite a few sessions together. Actually, became friendly enough. A really nice guy. Um, good man. Like. There's no difference in these guys and me, and I think that's a lot of where my confidence comes. I've been very fortunate to be able to train in places around the world. For example, uh, Gilbert Melendez's gym, El Nino. I trained there for three months one summer. Just went out by myself, got a job, worked, and trained. I've went to, I've tried gyms like Team Alpha Male because it's not far away. I just went out for a couple of days. Where else? Um, Tiger Muay Thai, obviously, and I've trained with. Like as I said, Alex Volkanovski, the UFC featherweight champion, and I'm I'm right there at that level. Like I I know how good I am, and that's sort of what gives me the confidence as well. And what I do know for a fact is all these all these champions are absolutely no different than me. Absolutely no different. They've just tripled down at what they're good at, and they've put that grind in. There, there's just no secret. There's no secret formula to this game. They put the hours in, and they've got rid of all external stresses stimuli that they don't need and they're just focused on being a world champion and that's sort of where I'm at right now do you have any any brothers and sisters as well do you Paul? I do yes I have an older brother and older sister they both live in Sydney um, where I was actually born and lived I I actually saw that earlier I mentioned Ross we actually forgot to bring that up yeah you were born in Sydney yeah yeah, yes born in Sydney my parents were both Irish we were all the kids were born in Sydney just to get the the dual citizenship very smart move and then we moved home. I'm the youngest. Um, whenever I was born, we moved home and we were raised in Ireland. So it's good, man. And I, I, I actually got to go back and live there last year, actually, or two years ago at this stage, after I had surgery in my hand, as I was saying with the, the injury layoff. After I had surgery, they told me I needed to take a year out. And I was like, right, well, that's the perfect opportunity. So got out and lived, and lived the life out there. But of course, it was just the grind life. I was still in the gym every day. Yeah, this this show. I think people have to learn a whole lot of shit about you. You know that. I yeah, I'm not talking about that too much. To be honest, people probably just see the the sort of the alter ego, Paul, the persona that's fucking. Yeah. Is he the head kick knockouts? Yeah. Is he the head kick knockouts? Yeah, exactly. That's a different me in there. You know what I mean? A lot of people don't know me. So yeah. No, you're cool, lad. But uh, here, like before, I, I know you, you messaged us earlier saying you wanted to work on that hand, so we're going to let you get back to that now in a second. Yeah, it's all but, good. <laughs> but uh, before we wrap things up, uh, like I want to say thanks, man, for coming on. Following your, like, following your career, it's been so cool. Like, uh, it's cool. Myself and Ross, like, we do enjoy watching your fights, even like backing you in, in the way up, just saying best of luck. But we'll have to get you on again 
for your next fight as well. 100%. Mate, anytime at all. And thank you very much. I appreciate the kind words there. And okay. anytime you want me on, I'm here. Yeah, Ross, uh, what's to say? No, absolutely brilliant, uh, Paul. Really looking forward to uh, carrying on your journey uh, or watching on your journey. It's absolutely incredible to see. And uh, I love that you and Ian Gary are mates. And I'm always like, who's going to get there first? I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I think, I think it's so that. funny. Oh, I think it's you brilliant. You want to see the crack that gets on between me and Ian? Oh, you wouldn't believe no, it. It's great. It's great. It's great to like the way this next wave is coming now, and all the fans are going to watch. They're going to see that it's like a team. are doing it together. You know, it's great. We are a team. That's uh, that's it's the fun. way I see it. Anyway, although we all represent different gyms, like myself, like yeah, Reese and Ian. Like one win for us is a win for all, in my opinion. And like we're, we're all really good friends, so it's good, man. Yeah, I'm, like, sure, people, I'm sure. I'm sure the people that have watched this have enjoyed this show, innit? But uh. Go. Guys, thanks a million for uh, watching this video. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and make sure to follow Handsome Paul <laughs> News. And Barry, as always, stay energized. <laughs>